The all-new Yamaha V6 Offshore F350. It's a featherweight knockout. The lightest 350 horsepower outboard on the water. Exhilarating boating and incredible control in a powerfully light design. The Yamaha V6 Offshore F350. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Eight days and nights of rain, 100-year floods, New Jersey earthquakes, and the moon blocks out the sun, turns day into night, sending reasonable adults running from store to store looking for a $10 set of 15-cent cardboard movie glasses just so that they can stare straight into the sun on a cloudy day, no less, only to find no shades at the pharmacy, only toothpaste locked up behind bulletproof glass. You know the word lunacy does come from lunar, right? Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's Thursday, April 11th, 2024, and the fact that I'm back here at my desk this week is a strong indication that we've got a busy news week here at the Jersey Shore. So buckle up your chin straps, keep an eye on your toothpaste, and let's sort through this week's top headlines in the world of fishing in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. So where do I start? Um, how about firsts? We'll do that. The very first Northern Kingfish of the 2024 season was checked in over the weekend at One Stop Bait and Tackle in Atlantic City. Young Justin Cruz was fishing with his dad, Ronald. I believe that was on Sunday. One pound, 14 ounces, almost two pounds, Northern Kingfish. For what it's worth, the state record in New Jersey for Northern Kingfish has stood for 20 years at two pounds, eight ounces. That's for Chester Urbanski in Barnegat Bay. Something to shoot for this 2024 season. Yeah, some of you may be looking down your knee, uh, your noses at, uh, at saltwater panfish, but I want you to think about what this really means. Kingfish is really more of a summer species, uh, sticks with us all the way until fall, but really everything is early. Kingfish is early, everything is early. Your past season's fishing logs are helpful, but this is clearly not a typical season so far in 2024. And of course, it's not just kingfish um, in the Atlantic City Absecon Inlet area right now. Striper action is heating up there. Plenty of tog available from the Absecon Inlet rocks, the entire jetty system, uh, and more and more black drum showing up uh, in the local reports. Uh, we talked about black drum several weeks ago in Atlantic City, and now there's more and more reports coming out of One Stop Bait and Tackle. So that's driving the need for everybody to go out there and get a surf clam, which is, of course, very difficult to get. But you'll go from shop to shop now, and you're finding a lot of folks are carrying surf clam. It's become a hot commodity at many of the local shops, Riptide and uh, a Brigantine, for example. So yeah. Uh, this is a good indication that another season of riptide rotters is upon us. Now, I should add that as of my last check on Wednesday morning, ocean water temperatures in Atlantic City were close to 47 degrees and climbing. So, yeah, good sign of things to come. More stripers out along the front beaches in particular, in addition to those drum. But if you saw our Monday email blast from the Fisherman Magazine and the cover, that was an old photo from 2023, last April, that I'd been sitting on from Derek Fredrickson. Uh, jumbo stripers from the Delaware taken in, in, in April, and I was thinking, well, you know, where am I going to fit this photo? I missed last year. I'm going to save it for April. So the cover of the digital weekly edition this week of Derek Fredrickson, sh uh, it shows it all. And it says, River Monsters, Earthquakes, and eclipses. That summarized our week. You see, on Sunday, I was working with our field editors compiling all the uh, reports from uh, all throughout the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region to compile our weekly fishing reports for the fisherman.com on Monday morning. And then Derek sent me another email on Sunday this year, this April, with this message. He said, happy Sunday, Jim. The bass are finally showing in Philadelphia. Caught this one on a not so fresh shad chunk. So yeah, there you go. I, I love when, when a plan comes together. But I, I do believe that photo from Derek that's on the cover of this week's Digital Weekly Edition was later in April, but those big fish are there along the Delaware, moving up around the bend uh, on their mission to spawn this season. I also heard from Nick Rambo this week, confirming that the South Jersey striper action is heating up. 
Uh, Nick was actually plugging along the Delaware Bay beaches earlier this week, found a mixed size of fish, including this 30 incher. So yeah, Delaware River, Delaware Bay, ostensibly getting good. And it's not just the blood worms. Uh, I know those big fish along the Delaware River are taking blood worms, but folks are getting out and throwing the soft plastics and the gliders and the, uh, and the stick baits at this point. And obviously the Raritan Bay, always a good place to be this week for striped bass action. All that rain last week made for nasty conditions. And despite a little bit more rain in the forecast for this week, Thursday, April 11th, in fact, uh, uh, hopefully it's not the deluge that turns our rivers and bays into chocolate milk. Thursday, April 11th, that's today. I think that's what I said. Did clean up a bit last week, however. Patty from the Tackle Box, he enjoyed a little post-ecliptic striper session uh, while out using Jigging World Scallywag Rod Works Custom Night Ranger aboard the old Jones Brothers uh, boat there, the, uh, the Tackle Box crew getting out there and getting it done. I went on a tirade uh, in last week's video fishing forecast about out front stripers as opposed to outback stripers. We're seeing that in the Absecan Inlet area, of course, and hopefully things turn hot and heavy uh, very soon along all of our beaches, uh, Cape May County, Ocean County, Monmouth County as well. Uh, I do appreciate the nod uh, over the weekend from Petey at Charlie's Bait and Tackle, though. He said Christine Sterla picked up some clam uh, at the shop and was first to report back to Charlie's Bait and Tackle on out front striped bass. And like I said last week, uh, there's got to be a first. Somebody's got to be first on the grounds. So thanks for leading the way, Christine. Uh, I, I also mentioned Jetty Canal and Bulkhead Tog action. This week it's going on. Um, you've got until the end of April, of course. You only have another 19 days, I believe it is, uh, at this point to take advantage of the April tog fishery. But in addition to the jetty rocks and inshore, of course, the boats are heading offshore when they can to take advantage of that four uh, of that blackfish limit that we have. Four blackfish with a 15-inch size limit through April 30th. Uh, though truth be told, a lot of folks are releasing the bigger fish to conserve the breeders. That comes by way of Captain Tom Daffin of the Fish and Fever. He's back on the jumbos again out of Uches Marina in Cape May. I saw where Frank Mahala congratulated a couple of blackfish buddies this week. Brian Mingion hit the 20 pound mark on TOG with Captain Daffin this week, released after a certified weight. That is a hefty fish. Wouldn't you love to get a sneak look at the chip that's in uh, Daffin's uh, sonar, his fish finder? Uh, Jay here also got himself a personal best on that same fish and fever trip, 16 and a half pounds. Now, if you do miss out on April TOG for whatever reason, you still have boats running out of Delaware until May 15th. A four fish bag there with a 16 inch minimum size. You can check out the folks at Lewis Harbor Marina, give them a call. They can steer you in the right direction. Uh, for a for higher boat like the Katie did or the JCT, uh, JC2. Great captains, terrific fishery out of um, uh, Lewis Harbor there to get on some of those Delaware reef sites. Delaware, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, of course, all three states that are now officially open for trout business at this point. Now on this week's open boat, Jenny was out at Spring Lake on Saturday when the Shark River Surf Anglers presented their annual youth tournament where children get to hook into some beautifully stocked uh, uh, trophy trout and enjoy an awesome day with friends. Uh, to me, my friends, this event about kids is what it's all about. It's the one day I'm not going out on the opening day trout season because I want to go see this firsthand out at Shark, um, uh, out at Spring Lake. Have a look with Jenny, open boat. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. It's opening day of trout season here. We're in Spring Lake covering the Shark River Surf Anglers Kids Trout Tournament. Very exciting day for all the future anglers who want to catch their trophy trout. So this is the place to be. And we're going to cover some of these eager little anglers on some big trout catches of the day.
American Shad, that run is on along the Delaware River as well. Water was high along that stretch last week, but it's been normalizing since heading into the uh, weekend this past week. And I was able to sneak away for a few hours on Tuesday, fished with Captain Tim Keebler of Fin Seeker Guide Service alongside George Shower, the Pocono Outdoors guy, my good friend Nick Konicheski of the Saltwater Underground. I think we had about 20 in just a few hours of fishing. We could have kept going. Uh, a lot of laughs as well. This traditional fishery in New Jersey uh, and Pennsylvania dating back hundreds, if not thousands of years. Steve Le Steve's Leaves Spoons on dipsies and hookless crankbaits did the trick, all catch and release for us, just getting a bend in the rod and some slime, some shad slime between good friends. With this week's freshwater report, from the man himself, here's George Shower, a.k.a. the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. Who knew that the trout season was going to open with floods, earthquakes? We even had an ap apocalyptic eclipse come through, and we still managed to kick off the fishing season in good order. You know, after that weather last week, I wasn't sure how things were going to be, but the trout season did kick off with a bang. We had tons of people check in. We had Randy Potter check in with the Wissahickon Creek, and he got himself in a beautiful rainbow. Also, Joe Fedora, you know, he was out up on the Lackawanna River and got himself into a bunch of really nice brown trout. Also, Dan Flores checked in. He was out in the Little Lehigh near Allentown. Uh, some great fishing there, good work there, Dan, with a nice rainbow. Uh, Anthony Bottoms checked in from the Petty Pack Creek down in Philadelphia. I uh, got in some nice golden trout there as well. At the Lehigh River right here in the Pocono, Steve Kolnick, well, he checked in with a really nice brown trout on the Lehigh. Doesn't get any better than that, guys. Also, uh, guys, earlier this week, I had a chance to get out and do a little shad fishing. Yeah, the shad fishing is back. Even after that extreme weather last week, we had the high water, uh, things were just got cold, the water got high and fast. But we were out earlier this week and managed to get into a bunch of fish. Actually, Jim Hutchinson, Nick Honachewski, and I were out with Tim Keeper on Fin Seeker Guide Service. We managed to get into a, about 20, 25 fish in only a couple hours uh, earlier this week in the morning. Uh, some great shad there. There were a couple of really nice row in the mix. Probably our biggest was around three and a half. I don't think we quite hit four pounds yet, but it was still a really good morning. It's lots of fish on the boat. Also, guys over in Jersey, there's other things to do. Don't forget, you got the you know the walleye, you got the smallmouth, largemouth are kicking in. Uh, Jen Wan checked in when he was over in Jersey, uh, getting those smallmouth on those jerk baits. So always a good time there. Lots of great fishing this week and guy coming up. Uh, I think the weather's be more moderate. We'll have more seasonal temperatures. Should be a great week weekend to get out and do a little fishing. I hope you guys get out on them, but from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. The countdown to fluke season at the Jersey Shore is now at 23 days. Time for bottom painting, wash and wax, zinc replacement, battery charging, all that good stuff that comes with owning a boat. The Saturday and Sunday forecast at the Jersey Shore ahead, it does look mostly dry, though a tad windy. Uh, and yeah, Thursday and Friday, rain is in the forecast again. What else is new? Uh, you do have a sale going on this Saturday and Sunday if you're working on the boat or getting yourself all geared up. Uh, Grumpies, Saturday and Sunday, April 13th and 14th for fluke fishermen. Uh, you can save 15% off uh, bucktails, uh, fluke ball jigs, also gulp. Plenty of deals for Jersey Shore surf casters as well. They also have casting demos both days. Um, I believe that's at 9 a.m. across the street at that marina park across from Grumpy's. New Jersey Striped Bass Bonus Program gets underway on May 15th. That's the one that makes use of the unused commercial quota. Uh, in New Jersey, of course, striped bass is a no-sale game fish in New Jersey. You can't catch it for sale. You can't sell it. Not in the markets. Nowhere. Uh, anytime you go into a store and you see stripped bass, I believe that's all hybrid stripers. Uh, and you, we have just over 200,000 pounds of commercial quota that's unused. So what happens is the striped bass bonus program issues tags to participating anglers to use a portion of that quota every year. Now, if you're not gonna fill out the daily catch logs and adhere to all the bonus program rules, 
don't apply for the tag. The data from this program is extremely important to the State Division of Fish and Wildlife. You can Google New Jersey Striped Bass Bonus Program. You'll find the page. You can also call the Nicote Creek office at 609-748-2020 or email sbbp at dep.nj.gov. SBBP, that Striped Bass Bonus Program. I did get a message from a friend who asked about the registration process. Uh, the notification came out this week and I guess some folks were doing the registration for the Striped Bass Bonus Program and it asks you for a registration number. Now, uh, the new Saltwater Angler Registry for 2024 has a CID number listed on there and I believe that's where they're, what they're asking for. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. I have passed along that information to the state of New Jersey. Uh, see if I can get an answer back. But see if, if you have any problems, see if you can bypass that. And if you can't bypass it, just put in your CID number, see what happens. Another question to me this week comes from our YouTube page where Juan asks about fly fishing seminars. Now, George and I will both keep our eyes and ears open, Juan, but I did see this from the folks at the Division of Fish and Wildlife upcoming events out at the Pequest Trout Hatchery. Now, obviously, the women's fly fishing event has passed this week, but there are another couple of events coming up next week, which may be of interest to you, Juan, or somebody else. You can find that information about these upcoming courses, fly fishing at Pequest, um, over at njfishandwildlife.com. Look for the Pequest information. You can also send an email if you have questions to pequest at the dep.nj.gov. Now, heading into this past weekend, a rare earthquake struck our region, registered a 4.8 from right here in the Garden State. Taking the lead in the Twitter Twit Award of the Year is Christina Amira Khalil. She's the Green Party candidate for that Gold Bar Bob Menendez Senate seat in New Jersey. Now, just after the quake, Ms. Khalil tweeted, quote, we never get earthquakes. The climate crisis is real. Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. While the ever-shifting Earth's crust has nothing to do with climate change, like a lot of folks, I was un unaware, really, of the entire Ramapo region fault lines where this earthquake was based. You've probably seen charts. We've all been going to the news to find out more. Um, but this is it, man. The yellow line on the chart on screen, that's the Ramapo Fault. But you also have the Hopewell Fault, that's in red, the Flemington Furlong Fault in blue, and the Chalfont Fault in white. Chalfont or Chalfont? Uh, oh, also that squiggly line off the beach, that's where the wind turbines and electric cables will be installed. That's Murphy's Fault. <laughs> Governor Murphy, you do get kudos for me this week, though. I checked the state Senate appointment list on Wednesday morning on a tip, and lo and behold, two names have been sent to the Senate here in New Jersey for advice and consent. Basically, they have to vote on these appointments. Two new members of the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council, Greg Hewitt from the Big Mohawk out of Belmar, would become the first Monmouth County resident angler on that council in quite a number of years. His name is on the governor's list this week to replace Sergio Radosi, who stepped away from the council in September of 2020, four years ago. Monmouth University professor John Tiedemann was recommended by the governor's appointment office, the governor himself, to be considered to fill the at-large member of the public seat, which was vacated by James Alexis in September of 2019, that's five years ago. There, there, folks, how long have I been beating this dead horse? The next meeting of the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council is May 9th. I look forward to seeing if those free agent signings are on the field of play that day. Good luck to both Greg and John. Professor, I'm happy to see you there. Positive movement on behalf of our fishing community. Two good people with great qualifications. I guess I have a new editor's log to write up for this May edition of the Fisherman Magazine. April, of course, is still on newsstands. It will be for a few more weeks until that May edition comes out. I don't know, man, I'm thinking about it. I, I, we got Aguiar, Doc, he's on the cover of the March edition with a striper, and then Trent Cole on the cover of the April edition. What do you think? Maybe Fluke on the May edition. May 4th, of course, 
will be the start of New Jersey's fluke season. Everybody's preparing for it. We'll start the countdown from this day forward and see what happens. Honestly, um, this would make a decent cover shot, but uh, doing so just might make Dr. Cool's head too big to fit in the lecture hall there at Stockton University. In all seriousness, congratulations to Captain, or, or Captain, Dr. Adam Aguiar has been putting in a lot of time soaking blood worms on this same particular stretch of Delaware Riverfront, knowing that perseverance would pay. He texted me over the weekend, I think it was a secret, so I, I saved it until this week, until the end of this week's report. But yeah, big fish are there. That looks darn near close to a 50 pound striper in my book. I think that's what Adam estimates it, it, estimates it to be. That is a jumbo striped bass. So yeah, the big fish are here. They have been for quite a while now. And with more sunny days, forget about today, with some more sunny days on the horizon, higher temps, expect things to really heat up um, in the next uh, several days. And again, mark it down, the next full moon is, um, is 12 days away. That's on April 23rd, that's a Tuesday. And I expect in the day or two leading up to that next lunar event uh, through April 23rd and then the days soon after, that hopefully that, that change in tide, that lunar uh, cycle, which brings in more water, will also send us another good slug of fish and great fishing after that. I'm hoping for bluefish, some jumbo tide runner uh, weak fish at the time, and that really should kickstart the, uh, uh, the solid drum fishing as well. Down in Delaware Bay, also throughout the uh, Great Bay, Absecon Bay area as well. Um, perhaps we'll trigger those spawning striped bass to make a move farther up the Delaware and up the Hudson as well, but they are on the feed in the days leading up to that. So I do expect the next several weeks to be, to be seeing some really epic catch and release um, striped bass fishing um, from the Delaware and the rare, but hopefully out front uh, as well. Suffice to say, all signs are looking good to the north, south, and east along the beaches and oceanfront, sorta. Uh, the NOAA marine forecast for inshore waters uh, does get a little sporty for this weekend ahead. Uh, so keep an eye on the forecast, but don't forget about that west coast action along the Delaware, big bass, and of course, the traditional shad run up past Trenton uh, at this point. Catch them up. I'll see you again next week, right here at thefisherman.com.